everybody, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to show you some of the tools that I've already restored. Um, and hopefully some that I intend on working on and some more here in the future. Uh, first, this is the most recent that I've worked on. It's a weed whip um, or a sling blade. Um, I got this like most of my uh, tools that I've restored at a local peddler's mall, which is a lot like a flea market. Um, when I got it, it was covered in rust. Um, it was a little short, but not not enough that I'd want to be out and uh, knocking down any weeds with. So, what I started with was just trying to remove the old hardware, which was quite difficult. I ended up having to uh, get out my reciprocating saw to cut the bolts off just because they were so rusted shut. Uh, I tried WD-40, uh, nothing was penetrating enough to really get them off. So uh, once I got the old hardware off, uh, I separated everything out, um, started just trying to sand off what rust I could um, because at the time I didn't have everything I needed. Uh, but after a quick little trip to the uh, grocery store, picked up some vinegar and I uh, soaked them overnight, all the pieces, and uh, then uh, took a wire brush and just started uh, sanding them down to the, to the bare metal. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, it definitely it takes a lot of elbow grease to get off all that rust. Um, hopefully in the future I'll have a grinding wheel which will be able to uh, take off the material much faster. Um, but so far all the tools I've restored, I've restored in this manner. Um, the hardware um, is all new except for of course the blade and the braces. And this is actually the original handle that we bought, that I bought it with. Um, wasn't sure if I'd be able to uh, salvage it, but it had some good sturdy wood underneath the surface. So, uh, but basically what I did is after I cleaned off all the sand, or I'm sorry, all the rust, um, I uh, coated it with some WD-40 just to work in some oil to help keep it from rusting again. Uh, wiped it back down, spray painted it with some primer. Um, and then uh, once that dried, I spray painted it again with some flat black paint. Uh, once I got it um, painted, I uh, set it up in my vise, which is behind me, and uh, began using a mill bastard file and a taper file to sharpen the edges. If you can see that there, I don't know if it's coming across on the video. And uh, it's a little cold now, um, we're in Kentucky, um, so I don't really expect to uh, be able to test it out anytime soon. But uh, come summer, hopefully, it'll take care of the little bit of grass that we have. We don't have much of a yard, so we can't really uh, reason to get a full on lawnmower. Um, which that's all right. A little hard work never hurt anybody. Um, this handle, I uh, used my uh, draw knife that I'll show you here in a little while to uh, take some initial uh, chunks off to make sure that there was some solid wood underneath there. Uh, my draw knife needs a little better sharpening. I've not successfully honed my sharpening skills just yet before I'll be able to use something like that to... Uh, uh, effectively. So after that I just took some various grits of sandpaper and sanded it down and uh, then I used some boiled linseed oil and uh, it turned out quite nicely. It's got a, a good feel to it and uh, it's nice and sturdy. Um, definitely looks much better than what it did when I first got it. Sorry, game. Sorry, as my 
Chocolate Lab Gabe's down here. He usually doesn't come to the basement with me, but he, the last couple days he's decided to uh, come hang out with mom. Um, I've shown you guys this hammer before. Like I said, I didn't create the hammer. All I did was rehang it. Um, I, uh, it's my first ever um, handle hang that I've done. It's not perfect, but it is very sturdy. Um, I also stripped all the varnish off of it and uh, coated it in some boiled linseed oil, which I agree with uh, Wrangler Star. It gives it a much nicer feel to the hand. This here is the draw knife. I found this at a Pillars Mall. Well, it's not really a Pillars Mall. It's an antique mall that is up in Ohio. Um, my mother showed me it. Um, couldn't pass it up. It's a unique find. It's got adjustable um, handles. Um, it does have some pitting that, you know, but that's okay. It just gives it some character. Um, it is going to be usable. I just need to, like I said, hone my sharpening skills a little better. Um, and part of it too is this handle is still loose because I do not have a torch or anything to heat up this metal to reshape and uh, squash this bolt so that it gives a nice tight fit. Um, it's been that way since I picked it up, um, but hopefully soon I will be able to uh, finish my restoration on this. It is not, you know, super shiny. I didn't do a metal, a super uh, mirror polish on anything. Um, mirror polishes aren't something I'm a bit concerned with. I'm more about functionality. Um, I want tools that, you know, they look like they've been used because they're going to be used. Um, part of my collection of these uh, older hand tools is because I believe in preparing yourself for the worst case scenario. Um, if we lose power for any reason, whatever that reason may be, I want to be able to still do whatever I need to do. And having these hand tools is one step in that direction. So. I'm a uh, big believer in gathering whatever needs to be gathered in order to uh, do whatever needs to be done when the time comes. One of my more favorite finds, um, this I didn't really have to restore much. All I really had to do was clean it up. I was really surprised to find this in the condition that it was in. But this is what I believe is a Stanley Sweetheart hand drill. Um, colors are all original. Um, you can even see the branding here on the uh, handles. Um, it it works well. However, I do not have uh, decent bits for it. Um, I'm hoping that I can pick up some better bits along the way so that I can utilize it a little better. Um, I find that when I don't have uh, proper proper bits that it slips because they are just not uh, sharp enough for the lack of force that, because uh, the bits I have are for a power drill, a battery operated drill. and. Uh, I just don't generate the force needed for those bits to operate. If 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 you think I'm just talking out my rear end, please comment below because I mean if you have any knowledge that could help me understand that better, but as far as I can grasp, that's what I think is happening. But yes, I believe this is a Stanley sweetheart because I'm pretty sure that anything with the red handles and the blue color is typically a sweetheart model. my bitten brace. Um, 
I found it also here at a local peddler's mall, just like the uh, Stanley Sweetheart hand drill that you just saw. Um, this, I have not had the pleasure of using um, yet due to the, uh, the bits that I do have for this, they need sharpening. And I'm not quite ready to attempt to sharpen those on my own because, like I said, my sharpening skills are not great yet and I don't want to ruin my bits. So hopefully, as I practice more with my sharpening skills, uh, I will be able to, to sharpen those bits and start using them. my more favorite finds is this here, uh, I believe it's a crosscut saw, yeah the teeth are offset, um, it is an Atkins, um, from what I understand is Atkins was a very high quality um, saw maker back in the day and probably still are today, I just uh, haven't done a whole lot of research. Um, I found, again, I found it at the Pedlar's Mall. It was covered in rust. Um, you could just vaguely see the logo here, which let me see if I can bring that into focus for you. Um, but it's got the Atkins medallion here. The handle, I'm assuming, is the original handle because everything, all the medallions and the screws fit it perfectly. Um, it's in great shape. I do plan on sanding it down and maybe putting it in some boiled linseed oil instead of this varnish, but I haven't got around to it yet. But this saw was covered in rust, and just with a little oil and some elbow grease, um, and some, some uh, sandpaper, and it came nice and clean. And it is sharp. I have used it, um, however I don't have, it's so long, I don't really have much of a s decent space to utilize a saw quite this big, so most of my, my saw work I use my uh, miter saw from my grandfather. This here is another saw. This is a back saw. Um, it's a rather large back saw. Utilized very well in a, with a miter box, which it did come with. Um, whoever owned this uh, had made this uh, plywood sheath for this saw, uh, so they took, they tried to take very good care of it. Um, yes, there is a price on there. There's no point in me trying to take it off. Um, but this is a Distin saw. Uh, the Distin company right here says established in 1840. This is a number four back saw. It also has all the original pieces, the medallion, and uh, this saw. It was covered in paint here at the handle. The rest of the saw was still in really good shape. It was somewhat rusted, which some of my photos you can see on my Instagram and such. You'll see what it looked like. Um, it didn't take a whole lot um, in order to uh, fix this saw up. Uh, I did take off the handle and completely sand it down to get all, as much of the paint and staining as I could. And then I uh, refinished it with some boiled linseed oil as well. And again, that fit and that feel is just so much better than all that varnish. If you're going to get these older tools, take care of them. Because they will do whatever you need to do as long as you take care of them and keep them from getting damaged uh, which is one of the reasons why I continue to keep this sheath um, I worked hard on scrubbing out all the rust on this saw and I want to take care of it, it you know it's it's one of these things that it's part of my collection of these tools in order to accomplish this dream I have of woodworking and the last thing I want to do is damage something that I've put so much work and effort into.